what are you doing? I'm planning out the garden. In January? Yeah, so we'll be ready because in March, or what, in February, we've got to start some seeds indoor. Okay then. <laughs> well, hello y'all. Today we're gonna show y'all how we get ready to plant our garden. And the first thing that you wanna do is figure out Now you say, how are you going to figure that out? Well, there's a little website that I found that is called morningchores.com. And if you'll go to it, then you can put in your zip code. Let's check that out real quick. Okay, so you can go to Morning Chores and click on the three little tabs, then click on their gardening thing, and then go to the first and last frost date enter your zip code and it says that I'm in Cleveland Georgia and my last frost date will be April the 21st and my first frost date will be October the 22nd so that lets me know that I can go ahead and safely put out things after April the 21st so now I'm gonna show you another tool that I use so I'm gonna show you a little tool that helped me and it's a Mr. Clyde's uh, garden planner. And on this side you have the spring. And on this side you have the fall. And what you wanted to know is your first frost date or your last frost date. So in spring we want to know our last frost date. Which it says it would be April the 21st. And I'm going to pull this little line over to where the 21st would be. And what this is going to tell me is if it says SI, that means to start indoor. If it says FP, that's the first planting outdoors. And then over here, it shows you when you should be able to start to harvest. And then if you go all the way over, it tells you the companion plants. Now this little planner will come with some instructions and tell you how to use it. It comes with a whole thing to show you. And it's so easy to use. So another thing that I wanted to show you in is this tells you how deep to plant. And it also tells you how far to space it out. But if you'll take this and then write it out on paper of when you need to get things in the ground, it'll help you. And then it'll give you like a time frame as to, hey, I gotta get these in by this time. And so it'll be really good and helpful for you. And I, I've always done really well using Mr. Clyde's. I've had a successful garden every year. Now that I've got it marked where my last frost date will be, it tells me that I can start sowing seeds in February for cabbage and cauliflower. So I get a paper and I go ahead and I write my last frost date up here and my first frost date. And then I take this Mr. Clyde's and start writing down the dates that it says that I can start doing my seeds indoor for February. And then I come down and do my March and then my April. And these are all indoor. These are all indoor as you notice I marked it right there. And I do this to kind of break it down so that I don't forget and it kind of keeps me in line for each month and then this is my first planting outdoors so in March I can go ahead and plant my onions my cabbage my cauliflower my turnips my beets and my potatoes and for potatoes we were always told that the best time to plant potatoes is on a dark night in March and then these are the ones for April and May Now granted, I've got these dates wrote down that line up with Mr. Clyde's calendar, but a lot of times I will do it like the week of March 8th or something like that. And a lot of times I will look at a calendar and go by the signs and determine which ones are best to plant by because my grandmother always said you do not want to plant anything in the bowel signs. So this is a calendar that you can get from, sometimes your local feed stores may have them, uh, local funeral homes may have them, 
They they could be all around your community. You just have to look for them, or you could order them online, of course. So this calendar is really neat because it's got a lot of different things on it, and this is on the very back of it. So it tells you like how far you should plant trees apart. It also tells you over here like the weight of grain and produce per bushel. So it's got a lot of neat stuff on it. Like I was showing you on the back. And this one shows to find the number of bushels of ear corn in a crib. And it tells you how to figure out how many ears of corn would be in a corn crib. So I thought that's really neat too. But these little calendars have all kinds of neat little stuff in them. In March is when we'll be doing our first planting outside. A real fruitful sign is the one whenever it's in the breast, which they call the crab sign. That's a very fruitful sign. So here's another book that I've used to help with gardening. And this talks about the signs and which ones are the fruitful signs and which ones are the barren sign. So the legs, which is Aquarius, is a dry and barren sign. And it's not good for planting, but cultivate, turn sod, destroy pests and unwanted growth during the sign. Then in Pisces, which is the feet, and y'all have to overlook my little drawing, but I was drawing it so I could remember with the calendar. But this is the third in the line of most productive sign, exceeded only by the Cancer and Scorpio sign, fruitful and productive, a good time to plant when interested in exceptional root growth. So this will be good for root crops. Um, Aries, which is in the head, is a dry and barren sign. And it's not good for general planting, but it's good for planting onions and garlic. And so in March, that's what we're gonna be setting out is our onion and garlic for the spring. Um, it also says to cultivate turn sod, dig weeds, destroy noxious growth and pests. Now the next one is Taurus, which is the neck, and it's a semi-fruitful and fairly productive sign and has an earthy nature, excellent for planting potatoes and root crops for quick growth, good for leafy vegetables. So we're gonna be planting our potatoes in March, so we wanna do it when the signs are in the neck to get a good crop of potatoes. Now next is Gemini, which is in the arms, and it's a dry and barren sign and not good for any planting or transplanting cultivate, turn sod, destroy pests, weeds, and noxious growths. Now this is the most fruitful sign that I was telling you about of the crab sign, which is the breast. And um, it's the most fruitful of all signs, best for planting, transplanting, grafting, budding. Any kind of reliable seeds or plants should produce and yield well when started in this sign. So this is a really good sign. Now this is the Leo, which is in the heart, and this is the most barren zodiac sign. So you don't wanna plan on this sign. You just wanna cultivate and destroy only. Okay, the next is Virgo, which is in the bowels, which is not when you wanna plant. It's the moist, but next to Leo and barrenness. Do not plant or transplant. Good for cultivating and destroying though. So this is the one my grandmother said, always don't plant on those if it's in the signs of the bowels. Okay, the next is Libra, which is in the rains. It's a semi-fruitful, moist sign. Very good for pulp and good root growth. Plant flowers, root crops, vines, hay, lettuce, cabbage, and corn, or hybrids for fodder. The next is the Scorpio sign, which is in the loins, and the second in line of most productive sign, exceeded only by cancer. So this is a really good sign too, and it's good for vine growth, and strength, excellent for any planting, transplanting, or budding. The next is Sagittarius, which is in the thighs. It has a barren trend, good for cultivating and turning sod, also considered good for seeding hay crops and planting onions. So there's another one for onions. The next is Capricorn, which is in your knees. Um, it's productive, earthy, and moist, good for planting root crops, tubers, potatoes, etc. Similar in nature to Taurus, but a little drier. I want to share a Bible verse that Mr. Clyde has put on his little garden calendar. And um, it said, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall 
reap also bountifully. And that's 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Another thing that I wanted to mention is if you don't have one of these calendars, what you can do is you can just go online and you can look up like today's sign for planning and it'll tell you. Okay, so one thing I was gonna show you is where I've got it written out for outdoor planning for my potatoes. It says around March the 29th. So then I look over here at my calendar and it says March the 29th, the sign is in the breast. So that would be a really good day to plan it. So I hope this has helped you. And like I said, this is a really good way to do your garden, to plan it out. And we've always had a successful garden using this little planner. So I hope y'all have a blessed day and y'all don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and come back for more videos because as soon as we're able to get plants in the ground, we're going to be having even more videos. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.